Super 8 is a wonderful format that I absolutely love dabbling in, but there's one issue. It's expensive! The film typically starts around 40 bucks a cartridge. Then you gotta get the film developed and scanned, and if you're using a service like Pro 8mm, that starts at 56 bucks. So we're talking roughly 100 bucks per cartridge. But this is where the company Digit Now comes in. They have a really interesting product, this 8mm and Super 8 scanner. But coming in at 300 bucks, this unit is far from cheap. Can this scanner help us Super 8 shooters save money on costly scans from film labs? Hey, I doubt it! Right away I want to make it very clear that Digit Now did send me this unit to review, but I'm not required to say anything or worship their company, they didn't watch this video before releasing it or anything of that nature. In my humble and absolutely unquestionably correct opinion, the most important aspect to scanning Super 8 film is the output. I don't care if you're using a million dollar scanner or a toaster, what does the final product look like? Well, unfortunately, this question is a little bit more complicated than it sounds when we're talking about Digit Now Scanner. It really depends on whether you're scanning color negative or color positive film. Here's some quick context. When processed, color negative film gives you a negative, which you can use for digital scanning or printing, but it's not immediately ready to be viewed without some sort of editing. Reversal film, on the other hand, gives you a positive image, which is ready for viewing. So, for example, you can project it onto a screen or a wall. If you're scanning color negative film with the Digit Now, the video quality is... Uh... Oh gosh, how do I say this nicely? The color negative scans look... UNACCEPTABLE! Yeah. Specifically with color negative film, the scanner's colors are just straight up hot dog water. They are just not good. All of the color negative film I shot scanned in extremely blue and green, which I feel like I don't really need to explain this, but uh, it's, it's extremely inaccurate. The film is not supposed to look like this. Just that you can really see this, check out the difference in both color and quality when you side by side the digit now against Pro 8mm, which is a film processing lab. It's definitely not a fair comparison, but these colors are really fucked up. As a result, I spent a decent amount of time correcting these issues in Adobe Premiere to varying degrees of success. But I gotta admit, I had a pretty difficult time grading some of these clips to get them anywhere close to usable. Ew. This seems to only be an issue with color negative film. Scanning reversal or color positive film yields much more acceptable results in terms of color. You might still want to play around with the color in post a little bit, but straight out of the scanner, this is somewhat watchable in my opinion. The scanner has three levels of sharpening, high, medium, medium and low. I left it on medium for all of them because that was just the default right out of the box, but I definitely noticed some instances of weird artifacting in some of the scans. I've also noticed that kind of hazy glow around the edges in certain areas. Another big problem, of course, is the bed of the scanner is very difficult to keep clean. I ended up hitting it with an air duster and a microfiber cloth in between every reel I processed. To me, it's pretty apparent when there's dust on the scanner bed. When it's on the negative itself, it'll just roll by each frame by frame, but when it's on the scanner bed, it will stay static throughout the entire scan, which could look pretty ugly. I don't have a ton of experience with 8mm and Super 8mm scanners, but on this unit, the little clips that you thread the film under, they're just not the best in terms of design. Especially when you have BIG MEATY CLAWS! They're definitely fiddly, but more importantly, they don't seem to hold the film down securely enough. I feel like the film manages to wiggle a little bit as it's scanning through, and as a result, you start to see something similar to gate weave, which is the magical phenomenon that occurs when film goes through a projector and moves around a little bit. I found that if you crop your footage in a little bit and add a stabilizer to it that can kind of combat the issue, but it's still an issue. And I will say that this seems to pop up a lot more on Super 8 as opposed to just 8mm. While this doesn't affect the video quality, it is important to note that this thing does take quite a long time to get through a reel. 50 feet of Super 8 roughly equates to about 3.5 minutes of video footage and it takes about half an hour real time for that to go through the scanner. As far as I know, the scanner is just taking individual photos of each frame and then stitching it together to a video file, so I get that that takes a while, but this is a lengthy process. And holy shit, what's that? It's a subscribe button. Wow. Okay, you you might as well just hit that since it's since it's right there, right? <laughs> Thank you. 8mm and Super 8 cameras shoot a variety of frame rates, including 18 frames per second, 16, and even 9 frames per second. But regardless, this scanner conforms everything to 20 frames per second. Depending on the frame rate of your source media, motion can look a little bit fast and a little too jittery. It is something you can fix in Premiere or whatever editing software you're using, but it is another step. This scanner does offer offer a few options in terms of customization though. You can modify the exposure, you can select if it's color negative or color positive film, you can even play around with the framing to get an overscan which allows you to see a little bit of those sprocket holes which I think is really cool, not everyone agrees with me. Some of them get really bent out of shape in the comments section. You are welcome to keep it to yourself. Because I don't care. 
but I'm gonna keep showing those sprocket holes because this is my swamp. But that's basically where the customization ends. You can't adjust the frame rate, you can't adjust the resolution, you can't adjust the white balance, the contrast, the tint, none of those things. Those are all locked up. Anything related to color seems to be locked away from our grubby little fingies. And if this isn't obvious, there's no log or flat picture profiles. It's just the colors you get right out of the scanner. What you see is what you get. And for those of you who are wondering, the scans are MP4s at 1920 by 1440. These problems aside, it was still pretty wild to take 8mm reels filmed by my grandparents and digitize them. The majority of the reels I grabbed from them are color positive films, so the color issue wasn't so much of an issue. Look at this, I got footage from the 1964 World's Fair, I referenced that in my Super 8 video, really could have used this a couple weeks ago. My dad shot this footage in Italy when he was 15 years old, it's honestly amazing to watch this stuff. It's certainly not the same standard of quality from a dedicated film lab like Pro 8mm, not sponsored by the way, but it is cool for preserving media. In order to discuss the ergonomics and ease of use, I think I need to explain my first time using this thing. It took me quite a while to get this scanner going, and that is largely because of the aforementioned clips that are just kind of annoying. But I managed to figure that one out. And honestly, once you know where those little clips are, it's not that bad to line the film up. But I need to note that the diagram on my unit does not match the actual location of those clips, which is extremely helpful. But make sure you take the time to do this right, otherwise your film can get all jammed up in there and potentially get damaged. After that ordeal, I ran into my second fun little speed bump. My Super 8 film developed and processed by Pro 8mm had a really long leader on it. We're talking like the length of that really long dog from One Piece. And for whatever reason the scanner just kind of stopped pushing the film through over and over again. Really not sure why, but I turned it off and turned it back on and then it was totally fine, so we'll call that one a fluke. But finally, finally. the film got into the scanning bed and I noticed, uh, hey, why, why are you in negative still? So I went into settings and I switched it over to color negative and well... Ew. Yeah, excellent. Needless to say, my first impression wasn't stellar. The instruction manual was also not particularly helpful as it felt like it was run back and forth through Google Translate at least 14 times. Any changes of product will not make additional specify. This item has big noise when using. Please don't disturb others. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie, my neighbors probably describe my video making process as big noise as well, so I can't really fault that one too much. But yeah, I can definitely confirm, this thing does have big noise. It is quite loud when it's running. One weird thing I noticed is that the scanner doesn't really let you do anything if there's not an SD card plugged in. And it's only compatible with SD cards up to 32 gigs. Anything bigger than that won't work with this scanner. In terms of build quality, this thing feels relatively cheap. The plastic doesn't feel very sturdy and I don't think this would survive a drop test to be honest. The buttons feel very cheap, but they do work. I didn't break them yet. The biggest issue I had with this scanner are these little adapter pieces. These adapters slot into the reels to make them fit on the unit. Within a few weeks of testing this out, they already got worn out. As a result, I need to leave my unit on an angle, otherwise the reels kinda just slip right off. Oh, fuck. Rad. I ended up taking a cassette tape case and kinda just wedging it in there to keep it on a little bit of an angle. My buddy Dave from the channel Noptop asked if this was like the Wolverine scanner, and at first I said, I don't know, I've never used the Wolverine scanner, but hey. Check this out. Watch what happens when I turn this on. Did you see that? Let me slow it down for you. I guess I do know a little bit about the Wolverine scanner. <laughs> the scanner also has an AV output so you can plug it into a TV and kind of use it like a projector, which is pretty cool. So who is this for? I don't think this scanner is going to change your life if you're a Super 8 filmmaker trying to save a few bucks. I just don't think the quality is nearly high enough for a short film project. And the flexibility just isn't there to really get you what you want. It's at a weird price point. 300 bucks doesn't exactly scream casual hobbyist to me. That is a commitment for sure. And at that price, I would definitely expect slightly higher quality than this. But I also manage my expectations. The world of Super 8 in general isn't very cheap. And any scanner that's a step up from this one is gonna get exponentially more expensive. I do think if you have a box of old Super 8 or 8mm reels decomposing in your basement, this could be a solid choice. It's not the highest quality in history, but let's face it, many of these home movies aren't exactly Christopher Nolan films either. No offense, Grandpa. For someone who is casual about this and just wants to preserve family memories, this can be a great option, and it's way cheaper than going through a lab. Just understand that there might be some extra steps in post that may come with using this scanner. If you have a box of 20 old 
old reels of color positive film, sending them out to Pro 8mm would cost you upwards of 1100 bucks, And that's if you use the most basic package. So if that sounds like you, this scanner can save you a ton of money. <laughs> Plus it'll give you a fun little weekend project. You gotta pick your poison, and I think it's very situational. You could rely on a lab and pay a ton of money. You could spend way more money to get a higher quality scanner for home, or you could work within the limitations the Digit now presents. I can't answer that question for you, but I hope I at least gave you some information to help you with that decision. I have a bunch of other Super 8 videos, check them out after this one. Best of luck, that's all I got for you this time. Uh, bye. Like, like and subscribe. subscribe. Sweet, Sweet new photography. photography. Dumb man.